Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Look at this oscilloscope. It's a real two channel CRT oscilloscope. And I mean, look at this size compared to my hand. It is absolutely amazingly cute. I am totally in love. This is a BNK. Um, type 4714 I mean it's amazing there is something missing here I think this is a ground banana but there's also a ground banana here so what exactly is missing here I need to go and look this up maybe a you know, connector or something I don't know um, oh yeah, we got magnifier and all that as well. It, it got all the fe features of a full-blown oscilloscope, and it's even two channels. It's amazing. Let's look at the. <laughs> Let's look at the back. There's only a charge connector. And that is it. The guy that gave me this one said, well, it's not working and I wish you the best of luck. So maybe I need a little bit of luck. I don't have the cable. I didn't look up any kind of manual drawings or anything. I didn't Google anything yet. So let's just find a screwdriver and see if we can open this and see what is inside, right? So that was super easy. Just unscrewing the three screws here, and then all the lids they just slide out to the back. So that is very, very easy. I guess this is a, I don't know, this real plate is that original or is it something? somebody made from something else to cover up um a connector or a charger or something maybe the idea is you can replace the batteries from the outside someone was really nice and friendly to write six volt dc so that is probably the battery pack let's look on the internal parts. So the first input attenuator, the, well, the in, input attenuator is just this for position, AC, DC, and position. That's kind of what you get on this scope. So I guess this is what we see here the capacitors here. They are in parallel with the different voltage divider resistors. So far, so good. And the PCB is a really nice two layer. Yeah. With quite modern op amps and ICs and all that stuff. So far, I have no idea how old this is. I mean, it could potentially be quite old, but I'm going to look into that in a few minutes. I see seven volts here. I'm of course looking for test points or anything that can help me figuring out where is the problem and what happens. Is there a picture or not? Power on off. Okay, that is easy. This is a super tiny switch for the current. This is probably using what I don't know, a, an amp or something. I mean, those switches are famous for not handling that kind of current, so that could be a potential problem already. What else we got? Okay, so this is the time base. It's uh, most of the components involving time base is just placed right here in flying leads assembly. Oh, we can mount, we can also de, 
We can also remove the bottom plate, right? This will access another trimmer. And what is that doing? I don't know yet. That will be the high voltage step up. It's all in here. And if you open this, you're going to get electric shock. Ooh, yo, yo. So the bottom plate we will have to remove as well. And another nice adjustment right there. There's probably some focus or some stuff like that, right? Because it's located in the high voltage uh, section and what are we looking for? Oh, yes, that will be deflection amplifiers and all that kind of goodies. What is that? I was hoping to see a little bit of better identifications. But I mean, that is a super, super cute CRT. And the mechanics around this scope is just absolutely amazing. But this is definitely the level you can expect from, uh, from BNK. They know what to do. <laughs> that is some beautiful piece of scope. Wow. All right, let's try and remove this and then it is power up time. So that is the look with the bottom plate removed. Oh, you can see we've got some battery leakage. Ooh. And it was all the way in here as well. It's actually not that bad. Somebody did clean it up quite good. Did it go into the high voltage section? We can see a little bit of what is going on here inside the high voltage. Oh, look at all those doublers, triplers and stuff in here. All the back is just full of capacitors. And that is a transform for the step up. Oh, I see a little bit of weird capacitor resistors mounting like that what is going on in here i really want to remove this lid and have a look but if you see here how easy is it to get in there and put those two nut plates or whatever you want to call them down there for the two screws here that's going to be an impossible task because there's this plate in the way. Oh, how do you do that? Impossible mission. You also need to unscrew these, but oh, you can do that. Okay. Maybe it's possible. I will have a little look. I just love to see how this is made, especially when I see all those capacitors. This is interesting. So maybe they're not stepping up that much and then they're just tripling, doubling, and whatever to get the how much voltage is this tiny little tube running on anyway? Like 800 volts or something like that, right? So it's not that much. But I think we should definitely see what's going on. Let's see if I can find a power supply. So I got six volts here and uh, I set my power supply for 1.4 amps of current limitation. Let's just crank it up and see what... Ooh, you want 0 0.6. And we got... We got light. I will turn this, this off. And I will also turn this off. Let's play with the intensity. Mm. Ooh, that is a good sign. Current consumption goes a little bit up when you crank intensity up. That is a very good sign when you're used to playing with CRTs. Then you know 
That is good. But oh, we got no picture. That is what is that push pull trigger? Is the trigger running? No. No picture whatsoever. So I will now go and see if I can find some schematics. Okay, we got ourselves a little. So this is also position. How do you enable or disable the two different channels? It's always just two channels, right? Internal or external triggering, internal triggering, push is auto triggering. Well, well, I was told this thing is not working. So, I mean, I got exactly what I expected. A new little toy to fix. Nah. But at least we got a red lamp, and at least we got a... Let's have a look at that. Three watts, that is a little bit low, isn't it? I've been poking around with this thing for a long time now. Scoping and probing and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, there's a picture now. Channel 1 gives this. See if I remove the signal. Oops, look at that. So there's something to do with the trigger. It is an auto trigger mode. See? Ah! This is auto trigger. See? And there's an input. So the trigger is actually responding to this. See, this is normal mode. And then there's no dot. Then I put in my signal. And that means we got a signal. It's not really responding a lot on the time base. So obviously, there's no sweep. So the X amplifier or something like that is not working, see? Also, no response on that. No response on anything involving the sweep. But however, the sweep here is somehow acting on the blanking signal, obviously. So this is position on channel one. So we've got multiple errors. In this unit, see if this is grounded, there's no signal. So auto trigger. That is a little bit weird. We had it actually giving a dot. Okay, so all, okay, auto is in. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, good. I don't want to burn a hole here in the middle so that's why i do this really really fast intensity work as well so there's a little bit of loose connections in that one the fun thing is this is channel channel one but look we got no signals on channel two and I would assume this thing is always a two-channel scope, right? So let's see if if the trigger is working on channel two. Okay, now we are in normal mode. See? Trigger response to channel two. So far, so good. And then channel one. Now we are triggering on channel one. So, a lot of the stuff is actually working, but the chopping is not working. Channel 1 or channel 2 goes to the trigger, that works, and we've got no sweep. Alright, great, now I need to poke around with this and see if I can find the, <laughs> yeah, the X deflection. That is going to be interesting. I found the Y reflection over here so you got a sine wave signal here let me show you guys the deflection amplifiers 
see that was easy and of course this uh, this voltage goes up and down when I poke around with the position so I mean that, that will be the deflection amplifier and all that kind of stuff we got two of everything here um, as you can see here those two ICs the two inputs here blah 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 that one will probably be the chopping and so but that is something I need to solve later I'm much more interested in figuring out uh, about the sweep amplifier because that is uh, you know much more important right <laughs> is this what you wanted to see yeah of course it works <laughs> it was that easy so this is all the X amplifier and stuff let's get some light here and all I did was trace around here and figuring out where is the missing signals and then I thought okay the position knob here look this should of course move everything you know and that wire is that one and this actually works here but look up here somebody's been poking around and made a short between those two points and when i remove this with the tip of my probe the scope works ha ha so that was a very easy repair now i just need to figure out about the channel one kind of thing because as far as i can see now channel 2 is the one that's working and when i power this off and on again <laughs> it's actually randomly channel 2 or channel 1 that is displayed on on this on this crt see if i put in the signal on channel 1 nothing is here if i put the trigger on channel 1 yeah okay then you get it on channel 1 so that's just how it works and this is the position this is the magnifier all that seems to be working intensity and i bet focus will be that one let me try and have a look yeah whoa that is sharp so that was good and then select channel 2 for trigger so all that is working anyway it's still a super super nice scope but there's a problem with the chopper so probably i'm gonna play a little bit more but so far i'm happy so here's what i've done to figure out how the chopping system works and of course from playing around with the front panel it is completely clear that this is always a two channel scope there must be a chop alternating something auto stuff so what i've done is one channel is sine wave the other one is a square wave and on the square wave i have selected a very slow rise and fall so it's looking nice like that anyway let me show you guys something really funny what we got here is two amplifiers with output enable that is kind of how it works uh, the selection between the two signals and look at the two select signals here i have marked with a little red dot so now i'm just going to touch this with my scope probe and then show you the screen at the same time so look at that that's one of them the other one Ooh, that is the other channel and then here doot. so see all the analog stuff in the entire signal path is actually working there's just no oscillator going on here or anything that selects this I can't find any any stuff that is oscillating 
So that is what we're looking for. There must this must go somewhere else, and I need to try and trace this down, um, probably on the other side. So that must be like an alternating signal or some funny stuff going on here. Oh my God, this signal. I don't know. Let me have a look. I don't know. I'm going a little bit in depress mode. Because I'm actually quite stuck right now. What you see here, that will be the two amplifiers for the two channels. And those are uh, UA733, so those are very, very fast uh, balanced amplifiers. And this DEEP14 is um, an N8731A, and that is a top secret part from another planet and the internet just totally don't know this chip and here it goes the first the last and the one and only picture of that part thing n8731a and the date code is 7629 and it is just impossible to find any kind of data of that chip. And this is what is keeping me from solving the mysterious quest about the chop alternating modes. I've uh, added a little bit of, of drawings here. This shows the connections between the two outputs. And by the way, that one there those are actually connected to that one why didn't they just put that track here so when i touch with my probe on these two signals it actually selects the signal from channel one and channel two to be displayed on the screen so i mean the selection part of that chip is actually working but there's no oscillations anywhere at all in this area and all the transistors and stuff that i can find here they're dealing with um the vertical amplifier so i'm actually a little bit stuck here and i can't find schematics of this fantastic scope that is really really annoying so I think I will park this uh, scope here for a couple of days and ask all my friends if there's any way I can go on with this. I am actually a little bit happy again. I am out of my depression about this unit. I gave up finding schematics about this Boolean here type 4714 that is an impossible dead end super super rare product there's just nothing online so what are we doing then let's read a little bit about what is written on the pcbs it turns out this type number is a uh, japanese scope panasonic vp 5602a and that is, I guess, the original scope. So this one is a clone, or they bought the PCBs and the CRT and the entire design. All the PCBs here, they're Panasonic PCBs from that scope. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I'm gonna put in a picture uh, of the Panasonic scope, and then you can see exactly how it looks like. Now comes the cool and the fun thing. I cannot find schematics about the Panasonic scope, but there is a Philips scope called PM3010. So I'm gonna put in here a picture of the Philips scope 
And that is, as you can see, exactly the same design, features, functions, whatever is the same. So I downloaded the service manual of the Philips scope. And what do you know? PCBs inside the Philips, they're exactly the same. Even the components and stuff like that, they're called the same. So that means now I got a schematic, I'm able to see the pulse for the chop shifter for the channel one, two shift system. So there's a pulse coming from the time base in via a capacitor. I removed a very big capacitor that was totally in the way so I couldn't see anything. This big one. So it was 330 pico. That turned out to be all right. So that capacitor goes to a transistor. And that transistor goes also via this little transformer. So here we go. go I got the three windings, as you can see in the schematic. So this is the base drive signal. Goes via a resistor and a capacitor to ground and a resistor to a feed voltage, uh, like an enable voltage for this system. And here we got a positive voltage. Here we got zero volts. The emitter, we also got a resistor and a capacitor to ground here. And there's also zero volts on this one. So I thought, oh, ha, we got a shorted uh, transistor. So let's check base emitter. Nope, no shorts and anything at all in the transistor. So the fun thing is this, this is short. And here's this a voltage. There's only that left, right? So there's a resistor and a capacitor to ground here where I have a short. So I think I will investigate that. So now I removed the capacitor first. That's the, the most obvious thing. And now the short is gone. Isn't that cool? So there must be a short in this capacitor. And what do you know? When I measure this capacitor, there is no short and it contains exactly the correct value. Isn't that just weird? So there was a short in the soldering or something like that. That is weird. Or I repaired the capacitor by soldering out on it. Huh. Weirdo, weirdo. And what do you know? The thing is, I actually thought that I was the one who solved this problem, but that is not the case. <laughs> this short was back when I assembled this damn board again. So there's something happening when I screw this screw in so it touches a track or something on the other side. Let me show you what happens when I screw this in. Let's look at this picture. Let's see. I'm screwing in. See? Isn't that annoying? So. Just loosen the screw and the problem is solved. Duh. So I think this metal here, there's something that is not like it's supposed to be here. But that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is stupid. But I think I will conclude this video and say thank you very much for the entertainment. Hope you had fun. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. That is a lovely, lovely scope.